Hey, what's your problem? You have business problems? We have business solutions. Well, sure. maybe. Life is a fight. In business, every day is a fight. Somewhat. So, hey, what's your problem? Yes, thank you, John David Wells. As always, the big voice guy for the What's Your Problem program. Check him out at the Wells Report. He is one of those political guys that talks the politics on uh, talk radio in Texas. But he's got a tremendous voice as well, and it is for hire. If you uh, don't like my voice, you can always hire him to voice your stuff and make it sound like uh, Mike Rowe from Dirty Jobs. This is the What's Your Problem podcast, where we talk to Middle Tennessee business owners and professionals about the one thing, because it's always something that's keeping us up at night, typically. This is a video and audio podcast. Check us out at whatsyourproblempodcast.com. I am your host, Jim McCarthy, and today... Longtime friend and another B and I'er, Mr. Alan Kane, with Chemdry here in it's Brentwood. Chemdry Brentwood. Yeah, and we're at, and it's and it's like a other bunch of names. Mr. Mrs. B's, uh, Miss, <laughs> Mr. B's, Mr. Chemdry, B's, Chemdry. Chemdry Franklin. I'm Chemdry thinking of the Brentwood. the chicken salad place. What is it? Hattie B's? Not not the chicken. Uh, place. Hattie B's is a chicken place and a chicken salad chick. Chicken salad chick, but there's a chicken salad place up off of uh, Berry Hill area. Got me. Yeah, I we can't don't clean that. their floors. We clean chicken salad <laughs> chicks' floors, but do you? Yep. They they make really good food. Fantastic. They got good lunches. Yeah, bring that mic up a little bit closer. You got to eat that thing. Raise it up. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing that we do to get the energy going is the the random five. Not a very smooth transition there, but we work with it, right? The Random Five is brought to you by itsyourshow.co. If you want a podcast like this, or an intro for a podcast, or set up your podcast, or you want to have clips extracted from an existing pod, anything, anything podcast production related, hit us up. itsyourshow.co. That's what we do here, similar to this kind of a podcast, even though it's a very stream of consciousness. So, Alan, here we go. The random five. Five completely, utterly random questions. Go for it. Question number one. Should taxpayers have the option to explicitly say that we, what they don't want their tax dollars spent on? Well, that would be wonderful. Wouldn't it? Be able to exclude certain things. It, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, though. I doubt it very much. Yeah. All right. I'm fresh, refreshing for the second question. Bear with me. Here we go. Can a society exist without laws? These are no. Kind of, these, are, these are easy ones. Yeah, they can't exist without laws, although we exist ignoring the laws. Yeah, typically, right? Yeah. Question number three, will humanity ever be able to escape tribalism and the creation of in and out groups? I don't think so, but I sure wish they could. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we would just all be Americans. Yeah, we'll get there, I think. We're, we'll come back around. I hope. I believe. In your lifetime. Yeah, I would uh, maybe, you know. Uh, let's see, question number four. I can't, I lose count. How much privacy are you willing to sacrifice for safety? Boy, these all have a theme. One of the founding fathers said if you sacrifice uh, safety, safety for, for privacy. If you sacrifice liberty for safety, you'll have it. neither. You'll have neither. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Well, I don't remember when it was said. But you're better at the quotes than I am. I rem- it's, a, it's a hell of a quote. We were trying to remember one the other day. The uh, from time to time, the tree of liberty has to be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants. Yep. yep. Who said it though? Is it Patrick Henry? Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. All right. Question number five: How would the world change if there was an accurate measure of aptitude? Wow. <laughs> I guess it depends on what you use it for. Yeah, I guess so. It could be better. But it'd probably get more into segmentation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. We just classify everybody on different levels. A lot of people get intimidated by Didn't the Didn't they used five. to do a, have a caste system in Europe or something? They still do that in India. Okay. Think, don't they? Well, there you go. There's I mean, answer. Are we not in a caste system uh, on, a, on some magnitude here? We've got the middle class, the lower middle class. Yeah, but we're actually trying to bring everybody to the same level of mediocrity. Right. <laughs> what is it? Uh, are you a big Rush fan? 
You know, the band Rush? Mm, not really. Rush Limbaugh, yes. Okay. Rush Band, no. Yeah. The Rush Band has got a song called The Trees. Let me just wrap this up real quick. There you go. There's the Random Five brought to you by itsyourshow.co. Check those guys out. How did I us. score? What's, What's my score? <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, you, you look at these things and... Uh, Rush has got a, a great song called The Trees, mm. and it's all about uh, the Bolsheviks mm. when uh, Russia went to communism. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all about the oaks and the maples and sunlight and all this other fun stuff. It's a really accurate representation and metaphor on how uh, socialism becomes communism at some point. I have to so, look that up. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, the Trees by Rush. So you have an extensive, interesting background, and I thank you for reminding me of it when you sat down here. Uh, you're 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 the proprietor here of a very, fairly large franchise that where you go into houses, you clean floors, you clean rugs, uh, you've got um, you actually clean area rugs. You you can make those really cool videos of you know mm -hmm. uh, getting some of these grimy rugs cleaned up, and they do the time lapse thing on them. You, uh, you clean couches. You've cleaned our couch that we thought was a lost cause. You brought it back to life. Oh, my gosh. That was like almost miraculous. And we don't tell people what we find on it. Right. <laughs> That's confidentiality. It's, it's like the mafia in a way. Don't worry about it, right? But, I mean, all this before your, this life, you were an engineer yep. of like a really like a deep magnitude, right? Well, I started out as a mechanical engineer at yeah. North Carolina State University years ago. And uh, went to work as a project engineer for Alcoa. Worked over there for 18 years. That's and aluminum stuff, Aluminum right? flat roll products. I right. can tell you everything you ever wanted to know about how to convert dirt into aluminum. Really? Yeah, it puts you to sleep in a hurry. But, I mean, that might be useful information. Might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but not very interesting. Not very interesting. <laughs> anyway, I migrated into project management and then into... Um, uh, technical executive management for various companies uh, ended my career doing uh, lean manufacturing, Kaizen black belt type of work, mm -hmm. going into struggling manufacturing sites and helping them get their feet back underneath them. And a lot of this culminated with uh, the company kind of ending, you kind of being out in the left yeah. out in the cold. Yeah, what happened, uh, I was 58 and... 07, do the math. Yeah. And manufacturing was going overseas. It was going to China. Um, companies were closing in the U.S., uh, younger people coming into the positions. Uh, I was being approached to run companies in uh, Russia, China, and that really wasn't where I wanted to go with my life. So I took my uh, retirement money and invested it in a business. A business that you'd never, ever think? Never, ever thought about it. Right. I just looked around at something to do. And uh, this one was attractive. It was, uh, I bought into it. It had a few rough years, but it's worked out very well. We've grown into one of the largest uh, chem dryer franchises in the country. And it was previously owned by somebody else. It was previously owned by somebody else who, frankly, did not treat their customers very well. Oh, okay. So you I, had some things to overcome. Well, I had done due diligence on business acquisitions in my prior jobs. And okay. Uh, this company had like 12,000 customers in their database, of which 11,995 hated them. Yeah. <laughs> That's one way to start. We would call customers up, and uh, they literally would cuss at us on the phone whenever they found out who it was. Really? And we had to go through a major turnaround, whereas now about 80% of my business is repeat business. No good. But, I mean, in the beginning, you had to just do damage control. Damage control and burn through a lot of money. Oh, my gosh. But... It worked. Why not just go golfing and pack it in and hang out by the beach? Uh, the retirement wasn't that great, Jim. Yeah. I had a good retirement, but I would have burned through it. I was All looking right. at how, how, even with investments and everything, how fast are you going to burn through your retirement? Oh, I see. And you've got to decide, is it going to keep in the lifestyle that you want? And will it last long enough? Right. And personally, I plan to live forever, so I've got to have continuous income. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, at that point, I mean, were you getting out there in the, into the mix and cleaning stuff? And I actually went out and did some cleaning to start with until I could start. Uh, well, first, it's hands-on. I think as an owner, you need to understand what your people do. I agree. And yeah. not just uh, be an administrator. It's one of those things. It's one thing to ask them to do something that you've done. Mm-hmm. It's another that to, you know, not understand completely what it is that you're doing. Well, Kim Dry has a certification process, and I'm actually certified as a master technician. 
How long does it take to get that? Five years. Oh, really? It's that in depth. Yes, it is. You wow. have to you have to work in the industry for five years, and you've got to pass some very extensive tests. No kidding. And demonstrate the capabilities and so forth. Did your engineering background play into all oh, the testing? Absolutely. Really? Yeah, the I would key, imagine it did. Well, the key. My background is I was very process oriented. Mm-hmm. Follow the process. And with the Kimbra process, if you follow the process, you get superior results. Yeah. If you cut corners, you don't. But you buy into this thing. And was there ever a thought of, what the heck am I doing? Oh, first three years. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, luckily, I had another job at the same time as uh, president of an aluminum company, and I was able to supplement the losses uh, until we could get feet back underneath us. Yeah. So, I mean, at that point in life, you, you like most Americans, you're, you're you know, up uh, late 50s, you know, all of a sudden, the big economic meltdown happens. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of, I think it sounded like you kind of weathered it nicely compared to a lot of other Americans out there doing what happened. Um, and then you get into this, and it's kind of like at that stage of life, like, you know, you're down on your hands and knees, you're scrubbing, doing that kind of thing? Uh, sort of, not quite yeah. that bad, but it's, um, I did a lot of you know, reflection. Was this the right thing to do or not? And was it going to work or not? I think yeah. like most anybody, entrepreneur that goes into a new endeavor, You have no guarantees that it's going to work. Yeah. But I believed in the chem drive process. It's superior to other processes and knew that if uh, I just stayed with it, built the right team, it would pay off. And it has. Right. Well, back then, was it easier to build a team? There were more people looking for work, I would think. (laughs) It was easier to hire people back then. Yeah. Not necessarily easier to find good people. Right. Now, you can set up 10 interviews, and if one person shows up for the interview, you're lucky. Isn't that crazy? It's it's insane. That sounds like a problem. It's a major problem. That is my problem. <laughs> is that your problem? <laughs> That's my problem, Jim. Well, you and Do I... you know have, somewhere I could go and talk about that? Uh, possibly. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, you and I have talked in the past even, you know, to overcome different issues that you had. And I think I helped you with some website copy uh, and kind of, you know, I can't remember what the basis of it was. Do you? It was something to do with, uh, you know, uh, market penetration or upselling or something like that. When well, upselling is key yeah. in our business, and it's something you have to do carefully. Um, right. I support selling customers what they need, mm-hmm. not what we have to sell. Right. So the first things we do of our— That's an easier sell, though, when you discover the need. It is. Right. In our process, we go in, I teach the guys, you go in and you talk and you walk through and you listen to the customer mm. and look around, not down, and discover what it is they really need. Do they have little kids running around? Do they have dogs? Do they have uh, major allergy problems? Do you have somebody in the family recovering from cancer? Right. These are all things that go into how we match up our product to the, uh, to the customer. Right. And it's a whole lot easier if... I'm not like my competition. Right. My competition goes in and pushes products on people that they don't need. I've actually had to fire a technician once for selling a customer much more than what they needed. Oh, wow, really? Yep. And we refunded the difference. Well, there's integrity for you. Have to. Yeah. But it's not common in my business. It's all about getting in there and... Making yeah. the big sell. Well, that's what yeah. the prior owners of my franchise did. They were in for the one-time kill. Well, it's so transactional, you're not going to get, like you said, the callbacks. Right. You know? Well, I'll give you an example. The year before I bought the business, they went through 47 technicians in, oh three, in three vans. The rule was if you did not close the job, mm-hmm. the second time you went into a home and did not close the job, you were fired. Well, that's motivating. It is. Yeah. And what happens is people move on and they get fired. You know, or they I, was, up, I was being sar- sarcastic. It's not motivating at I know, all. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but it's, um, it's, and again, with our process, the key is having knowledgeable people that understand how it works, not just how to do it. And you're not going to learn that in a few months. I didn't realize that the cleaning business was so close to the car business. <laughs> On an integrity level, it's about three levels below. <laughs> but I think a lot of things are getting better in those businesses because they have to be. Right. You know, there's not so much. There's only so long you can run that way. Well, you know? in our in our business, my customer is intelligent, is educated. They understand the benefits of our product versus other 
others on the market. Mm-hmm. And um, they want that integrity. I mean, just today I was answering the phone and a customer called in. and uh, We couldn't take care of them, but I explained to them how they could improve their situation themselves right. with some, quote, home remedies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to do that. Right. But, I mean, that's uh, you never know. They'll remember that down they the will. road. Six months from now, when you because you're booked out right now, I'd imagine. You yes, just, we are. Yeah, which is a good position to be in. Well, right. an example, I had a fellow call me from up in, uh, he was out way outside of our territory. Mm-hmm. And once I said, look, I can't help you out, but I talked him through his problem. He said, you yeah, know, we've got a church in your territory. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure you get that contract. Now, this is just coming from you. You just knew how to do business the obvious right way. Which you know, eighty percent of it is just treating your customers the right way and concentrating on the relationships, not the exactly. the transaction, right? We don't have customers; we have clients, right? And the differentiation is you have that relationship. You build a relationship. When somebody calls in to us, if they, we get a lot of folks that just want to talk. Mm-hmm. We'll spend thirty minutes on the phone with them, listening to them, and just talking to them about their kids or whatever, and build that relationship with them. So they remember us. Right. And that's, uh, and that goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Just a few minutes, just invested of what I call be them centric hashtag. Uh, it's not about you. It's about them. Yep. And I mean, we did that a lot in the car business. Some people just wanted to talk, uh, especially when I got to Mercedes, you deal with, you know, big egos, uh, business owners. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they would just want to tell tell me what you do, you know, just talk. And that there's an endearing quality to that. When you, you remember yep. that person. Well, the interesting thing with us, we'll get a lot of, um, I'm a senior citizen, but senior citizens that- See, I don't see you that way. Oh, thank you. And I'm I'm, I'm serious. I'm not being sarcastic. Thank you. But we'll get a lot of older folks that fixed income, they don't have a lot of money, and they'll spend the minimum on a job, Mm -hmm. but to them, that's almost like their life savings. Yeah. And you've got to give them- Excuse me. You got to give them the same level of service as somebody that's, that's in a McMansion. Right. What were some of the uh, things you had to say early on? You're starting the business. You had to, you're in damage control. You know, look, I get what you're saying. I completely apologize. We were, I, this is complete new new management. That was something mm-hmm. along the lines of that? You did you're, that, but you also had to buy your way back in. Oh, really? It's that simple. You had to offer discounts. Give us a chance. Mm-hmm. Give us a chance. It's different. We are different. And that's an easy thing to say on the phone. Why would you believe that? Yeah. There's no reason to believe us because the prior owners would say the same thing. And you have to just be honest with folks. And you've got to acknowledge that, yes, there are crooks in this business. This is a very crooked business. But it's so easy. It's almost an advantage for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's easy to differentiate. It just takes time and relationship building. But that's a key word. Differentiate is key. We use that a lot in our growth period Mm -hmm. is how do we differentiate ourselves from the competition? Right. Um, how can, saying, it's easy. <laughs> well, but also educating a customer on our process because the most common question we get whenever somebody, if you pick up the phone, how much you charge to steam clean my carpet or how much you charge to shampoo my carpet? Yeah. And we don't do that. Right. Our process is better than that. You, you, getting, you have to see what you're doing, I would imagine. Right. Getting them to see the difference, the advantages. You, uh, you've seen the presentations we've yeah. done at BNI. And just educating the customer. Now, once I get that customer educated, we're not going to lose them. But at that point, it's you know, how do you uh, overcome that objection? Because you've got right at the right at the front a very transactional approach. Mm-hmm. We want to know how much it's going to be. And typically, like in what I do, um, you know, I'll kind of come back with, okay, what's your budget? You know, if mm-hmm. somebody's looking for a voiceover or a video production, you know, podcasting. Yeah. I mean, literally podcasting is right now, how I price it is it's a wide bracket, mm-hmm. okay? Because it depends on how much you need me, right? Uh, I yeah. once got it. I was interviewed for a job as vice president of operations of a, of a company. Yeah. And I got the job answering this question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Prioritize schedule quality and delivery mm-hmm. from a customer's perspective. Now, when the customer calls in, in their mind, the most important thing is the price. Right. What we have to do is get them past that and focused on quality because at the end of the job, the most important thing is did you get the job done right? Right. Did you get, did the customer get value for their money 
by getting a quality job that's better than the competition could deliver. Yeah. So a customer, if you ask them up front, they're say, well, price, uh-huh. and then schedule, and then quality. And the price, did you get here on time? Yeah, quality. Everybody does good quality, don't they? Yeah, they sure. assume quality. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's quality, schedule, price. Did you do a good job? Did you show up when you said you are going to show up? And then did I pay a fair price? There's a, what is it, the, the, you can have it one of two of three ways, cheap, fast, or now, I think. No, cheap, fast, or good. That's what I just said. Right. You pretty much did. Quality, schedule, price. Yeah. Yeah, that is the question. You, it's a much more sophisticated way of saying the other thing. <laughs> but in all, in all modesty, I think we deliver all three. Well, yeah, you can, you know, and and a lot of, it's a very cynical way to look at with those three tenets of, well, you can have a two, you know, pick the two you want Mm -hmm. out of the three. It's like, no, you can deliver on all three. It's possible. But you also, you just have to be honest with your customers. You know, whenever we make a mistake (laughs) or we did not meet that customer's expectations, we will go back. Yeah. We will do everything possible. We will even give them services they didn't pay for. Yeah. Um, they may have declined it. They weren't satisfied with results. We'll go back and take care of the customer. We're going to take care of them. But, but in doing that, you're spending advertising dollars in a way because you're, you're buying uh, goodwill. Mm-hmm. You're, you're hopefully creating them into a flaming advocate. Yep. You know. Well, there's a saying, this was hammered into me, whenever you have a dissatisfied customer, they'll tell 10 people. Yeah. Whenever you have a satisfied customer, you'll be lucky if they tell one. Yeah. yeah and, of I, course, now with Google... Easy. reviews yeah there's a lot of interesting people out there it's like i had a good i had a really good uh experience uh at a local establishment here recently and they're like hey we, we you know he explained it to me uh you know you know how this goes we're going to send you a survey we we re- it really helps me if you do this on the sur- you know setting me up and priming i'm like dude that's not a problem i really i, I have no problem doing that mm-hmm. i get it i understand where you're coming from it's like i they're sending me text reminders They're like, "Hey, have you?" I'm like, "I haven't gotten it. I want, I need to get it so yeah. I can do this for you. I haven't gotten a phone call, a text, or an email, so I don't know what to tell you. I'm willing to do it, and I understand why. Mm-hmm. You know, I get it. I was on the other side of that myself once upon a time yep. in the car business, and I'd have to prime people for tens and yeses. Yep. And if there's anything, if there's anything holding you back from giving me all tens and yeses, I want to know about right. it before you take the damn survey. Oh, we'll have some people." blasts before we get out of the driveway right but our policy is if you don't give us a five out of five we're yeah. going to call and we're going to ask you what could we have done differently right to earn that five and if there is something we can identify that we didn't do the best we could do we go back right or we offer to go back yeah now how do you instill that because you have as the ceo the owner the franchise the head honcho your job in my opinion is creating the culture mm-hmm. that drives that forward it's not easy. Oh, it's not easy. Um, unfortunately, nowadays, whenever we get a, a young employee, we really have to teach them how to be an employee. Yeah. Uh, they don't come prepared. They, they can't do math. They, mm-hmm. they don't uh, have that solid technical background. Right. And they're used to... Uh, What's my problem? <laughs> they're used to... Uh, <laughs> like a, as we talk. Me into that. <laughs> they... Um, they're used to getting their way. Yeah. And you've got to teach them that the customer is always right, even when they're wrong. Isn't it funny how, as owner managers, we have to take that into consideration yep. and have that grace yep. on? Because you understand at their stage of life, they just don't have the, the miles yet. Right. But, but I always go back to the process. Yeah. Um, being an engineer, it kind of is my where I go home to is the process. That makes sense. And our and I have to instill in them the process of quality mm-hmm. first foremost. They have to know what they're doing and how they treat the customer. The customer is our lifeblood. Yeah. If that phone's not ringing, we're not in business. Right. And I instill in that. Plus, they all work on commission. Mm-hmm. And if we have a complaint, they have to go back. They don't get paid. To go back, but they have to go back. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is we want the job done right the first time. Right. We want the the customer doesn't the customer's not really happy that we stand behind our product and come back. The customer's happiest because we do a good job and we don't have to come back. Yeah. That's what the customer wants. Do you get a lot of high turnover in your line of work? Not really. No. Um 
recently we've had some turnover, but overall, I mean, I have uh, people that have been with me for 10 years. Right. Um, in this market, in carpet cleaning, two to three years is a long time. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's, a, uh, it's a young middle-aged person's job. Yeah, because it's, it's physically taxing, and you know they could probably uh, run a crew at some point, I would think. Yeah. Well, but, uh, it's also, but right now, one of my best new guys is 51 years old. Oh, wow, really? But he has, he has the work ethic. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually asking a lot of non-traditional types of people. Like the other day, uh, we had that guy from New York that mm -hmm. visited the chapter, and he's out of a job. And I'm like, well, how handy are you? And he goes, I'm really handy. I said, you up for learning a trade? Yeah. All right. Let's mm -hmm. talk. Well, the interesting thing, you would think I would hire, I do hire people from other carpet companies. I don't know if I should mention names. I won't. Right. Um, but I'm almost better off to hire someone that has never cleaned carpet. Yeah. You get to shape them. Yeah, we were just having this conversation, hiring attitude over skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the thing. I want personality. I want someone that's going to go into, they're going, they're going into your home. Yeah. And when they come in at home, they need to be respectful of your property and understand that your what your expectations are and meet those expectations. But in your role, who are you really working for? Who am I really working for? My yeah. employees. Okay. That's what I was going to... No if, man, buts about it. Yeah. I, I believe in the inverted organization pyramid. Right. My job is to give them the tools, the training, the process, uh, the skills to be successful. Mm-hmm. Not to catch them messing up. Right. I want, if they're successful, I'm successful. That's the way it kind of goes. I go. can't be successful without successful employees. Servant leadership. Yep. Yeah. Really does come into play. It makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, the, the culture creation aspect of things, I'm always fascinated with how people create their culture. Uh, a lot of people go by with, um, you know, um, core principles, mm -hmm. uh, an overarching, uh, you know, I work with the, the Mercedes dealer here in town, now the Ferrari dealer as well, and their owner is huge on, on culture and a car dealership. Mm -hmm. So, and it's refreshing to see because it needs to happen in that industry. Um, it and needs basically, to happen in our industry too. And You're leading the charge though, I mean. And that's where it starts. Yeah. You have to, if you want... <laughs> As a guy once said to a bunch of alcohol executives, uh, how do you change the culture? you got to change the people. Yeah. And sometimes I think that is true. you just got to make changes. If, if someone doesn't fit, you've got to find somebody else. But having said that, I think most people can change. And the culture starts with the owner. And you've got to stand firm on the culture. There can't be compromise on the culture. Well, there's got to be a guiding light and a true north. Exactly. Uh, of what you believe in. But also... I'm a big advocate of Stephen Covey, mm -hmm. uh, Seven Habits, and you know one I always go to is a win-win. Mm -hmm. We've got to find a win-win-win solution. Win for me, win for the employee, and win for the customer. Yeah. And when we hit that, we're moving. You when do you? I mean, you you try. It's almost like parenting in a way. You try and yeah. give and give and give. It really does. It is mm -hmm. you know. I think one of the aspects of a decent leader is it's tough to be one without kids. Yeah. Because I think they really do train you on how to lead. I mean, because you, you're kind of thrust into this role. You're going to sink. You're going to swim. Um, what do you do when you have a, you know, sometimes it just doesn't sink in, you know? Well, it's interesting. You, you mentioned being a parent. I'm going to digress a little bit. I, it was funny because just the other day I was talking to someone about transactional analysis. Mm -hmm. Parent, adult, child. Have you ever no, studied that? No. It's a fascinating concept of how we communicate with each other. You can communicate as a parent. and You take on a role in a transaction, either a parent, adult, or a child. Mm. And what you're seeking is adult-to-adult -adult communication. Um, a lot of the time with employees, sometimes you're they're trying to be the parent. Sometimes they're, they're, they're children. Yeah. And you've got to elevate them to be adults. Get them centered, if you will, to interact with people on an adult level. Yeah. Now, what was your question? I kind of took off on a tangent. No, it was just, you know, uh, how do you know that the earmarks are there where it's just, you know. You don't. <sighs> Honestly, you don't. You yeah. do the interview. Um, I have an interview process. I talk, to an, I talk to a candidate. My office manager talks to a candidate, and my technicians talk to them. Right. And it has to be a, <clears throat> excuse me, it has to be a unanimous decision. Yeah. That this person is going to fit in our team. Oh, wow. And it's not just 
doing the job, but they also have to fit in the team. I don't want a lot of friction. It was funny when I moved here. I don't often tell this story. I almost forget that it even happened. Uh, I was interviewed at the radio station where I worked, uh, and they put me in conjunction with the person uh, who I was going to work closely with. We got to talk and everything. He asked me about my background and a lot of interesting questions like, you know, you do know how to edit, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's what I've been doing for the past seven years. But, yeah, I've you know, got my own scissors even. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right, here's a piece of copy. Go into the room and, you know, and it's funny. They didn't have any of the software I used, but they had a software that I was familiar with. And I'm, you know, getting in there, figuring out, okay, I can't right click. It's got to be a left click, all this other stuff. And it's, you know, thrown me for a loop, but I got the job done. And uh, I'm like, here you go. I'm like, I've never had to do that before, but, you know, okay. And he's like, the reason being is that your predecessor, who only lasted maybe two months, was a great interview, but couldn't do any of that. He couldn't produce. He was temperamental. Uh, he didn't like working with yep. the salespeople. And I'm like, oh, okay. I get it now. Yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> Those... pass Jim around and see if everybody <laughs> likes him. Yeah. But, you know, if you're working as a team, you've got to have that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I have a small team. I have six employees plus myself. It's not yeah. a large company in terms of people. Um, we've got one person in Memphis. Um, and I've got to be able to trust them because when they're coming into your home, they're not supervised. Right. And if they're, that, That's a high trust situation. And guess who's going to tell me if I have a problem or, who I have, or who's going to tell me if I have a great person? The customer. The customer. Yeah. And Not going to be the employee. No. Oh, <laughs> Man, I did really great. I didn't steal a thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to tell this story. Okay. I had a woman call in one day. Uh, we had just cleaned the carpet, and she accused my technician of stealing grandma's china, mm -hmm. the entire set of china. Right. And this is a 23 year old kid that's a musician and i'm envisioning him stacking all that china up and bringing it out and putting it in the front of our van and driving off with it <laughs> <laughs> twisting my tie me to the railroad tracks mustache as i drive away <laughs> the detective called me investigating it long story short uh her uh, daughter had pawned it <laughs> oh wow <laughs> and blamed it on us and you know what's funny is that He's 23 year old, three years old and a musician. <laughs> How does he even know what he's looking at? Right. Right now? <laughs> Why would he care? <laughs> wow, look at that fine china. <laughs> you know how much I can get for that? <laughs> that's not even crossing his mind. But that's exactly the reaction I had when the detective called me. We were both laughing like, really? <laughs> he was doing his job, and he, he got to the bottom of it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, the things you must hear. In that business. Well, hear and see. It's like the day um, I get a phone call out where our pet urine treatment work on kangaroo urine. That's interesting. That's a good and question. It's a little different. And yeah. I said, yeah, why do you ask? He said, well, the client has two kangaroos in their house. Oh, they're in a cage? No, they're sitting in the corner looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not friendly, man. <laughs> I said, yeah, it'll take care of it, but stay away from them. Those said, things are jacked. And see if you can take a picture. And uh, the homeowner declined letting us, and I'm not going to say who it was, but right. he had brought them home for the weekend. Oh, my gosh. As pets. But Oh, the other the other best story, that calls me and said, can we clean cow hide? And I said, of course we can. I mean, we've got leather cleaner. And he said, you don't understand. It's still got the, the cow. Got the hair. <laughs> it's got the hair. Okay, where uh -huh. is it? And he said, the walls, the ceiling, the oh floor, gosh. the upholstery. Mm -hmm. And remember the old gateway cow colored boxes yeah 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 i envision one turned inside out <laughs> right right yeah we cleaned it well that's a story to tell for sure yes yeah, strange ones but i mean that's uh you know i, I guess i'll i mean we've, we've kind of uncovered a few here but what is your problem i mean employee uh, attraction retention that kind of thing which is a it's, lot of people's problems <laughs> it's everybody's problem i was talking to someone from corporate the other day and he said he hears that a lot yeah. it's just uh you can get people is finding honest, hardworking people that will do a good job yeah. and fit in with the team. Nowadays, it's, uh, well, also with the current economic climate and all the handouts, I'm not going to get political, but right. all the handouts that people are getting, they they can stay home. And Is that still like having a lagging effect? It's coming to it. Everything I hear is it's coming to an end. Right. And within six months, people will be looking for a job. I um, 
I was talking to a young man on the phone I'd picked up through uh, Indeed, and I said, well, can you come in for an interview tomorrow? No, I don't think I can come in for about two weeks. And I said, well, I'll probably have the job filled in two weeks. He says, no, you won't. Nobody wants a job. Oh, wow. I didn't bring him in, but right. yeah, that was yeah. his attitude is, you're lucky to get me. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's you know, in the in this day and age, you can really rise to the top if you understand that this will vacillate. Absolutely. Right? And that's what I'm seeing. That's why I've been able to replace some people here recently that weren't a good fit with the team. Right. And I look for those people that understand what it is to be an employee and the need to do a good job. And just be a team member. Be a team member, and I've got a really good crew right now. I've got yeah. some senior guys. I've got some young guys, but the young guys are coming on fast. There's a lot of, um, a lot of even people in the trades, and I, you, what you do is a trade. I would certainly say it is. Uh, that even people that just mistreat the customers, you know, they're they're their own tradesmen, whatever that may be. And they, I'm like, guys, they're going to remember this. It's not always going to mm-hmm. be like this. You can, you got to conduct business like you, it's, it's 1929. Yep. Always. Cause uh, the tide could, is, is going to change. It's yeah. inevitable. The other thing is, is getting people, you know, we have a training process and also an online testing program that Kim Dry gives us and, you know, getting them pulled through that program and getting them to understand that edu- the knowledge is what allows them to upsell. The right. best feedback I get from customers is, wow, this guy came in, he explained to me what I needed, how it worked, what we were going to do, and he delivered on the product. Right. We have a, we have more processes than any other carpet cleaner in the, in the industry. Mm-hmm. All of them are super simple. We just have a lot of them. Yeah. And if performed properly, they produce superior results. And that's uh, and that's that's great to have. It's part of the uh, corporate ethos for sure. But it's it's got to transcend down to the the tip of the franchise. sword. Yeah. It's got to transcend down to the technician in the front the lines yeah. because that's the tip of the sword in military terms. Is um, if you don't have those good people out of there doing a good job, represent they're representing me every yeah. day, mm-hmm. unsupervised. From the time they ring that doorbell until they leave that home, did they do a quality job? Did they treat the homeowner respectfully? Did they uncover what the homeowner really needed versus what we have to sell? And uh, did they deliver? And did they leave that home better than they found it? Was it healthier whenever they left? What about the guys, uh, people who run businesses that, you know, they, they believe in a culture and they think that they're working for their employee, but at the same time, it's the attitude is... You're lucky to be working for me, kind of thing. Oh, the use and abuse guy. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've worked for people like that. As have I, for very brief periods of time. Yeah, because they shoot themselves in the foot. People have options. Yeah, or as I like to say, you know, Lincoln abolished slavery in 1865. Our employees are not slaves; they have options. Yeah, you know my my role is to establish what the rules are. You have to follow the process. You've got to treat the customer right. The employee gets to choose whether they follow those rules or not. Right. If he chooses not to follow the rules, he needs to go work somewhere else. They got to know that you care about them on mm-hmm. some level, you yeah. know. Which you know, for for people in our positions, it can, it can be very taxing because you yeah. know, extended part of your family in a way. Well, a big part of on my job is I can have two technicians working side by side in the same market, and one's making twice as much as the other guy. Right. Because one knows the process, he can go in and talk to a customer and explain to them and identify those needs and offer them the product. And the other person's going in and doing the minimum. Right. And same opportunity, same skill set, supposedly. And you can be successful or not successful, and that's pretty much on them. It's just a mindset shift at that point. Yeah. But then, you know, we try to... We try to identify when someone's struggling, uh, get them back with an experienced person, sit down. Every time we have a reservice, we review it as a team. What went wrong? Mm -hmm. What could we have done better? Uh, Have we got an equipment issue? Have we got a process issue? And we fix it. But those are all symptoms of the bigger problem, you know, as far as figuring out what really it is. It's at the same time asking them, look, where's your mind? 
You know, what do you think? Do you mm-hmm. not, are you afraid to ask the questions? Are you afraid to bring it up? Do you not believe in what we're doing? You know? The number one rule we give a new employee is if you're not certain, stop, call. Right. Stop what you're doing. Call me or one of the other senior technicians and ask for advice. Don't try to fake it. Right. And that <laughs> that implants a feeling of support. Yeah. You're not out there by yourself. I didn't like making promises to customers on the when I sold cars uh, that I wasn't sure. Oh, we well, don't. What, yeah, but it's like, why? They're, they're only going to find out about it later on. Yeah. Don't say anything just to, to get them to buy the car. If you don't know, you don't know. I mean, how many yeah. times I didn't, you know, was it the, uh, stay, they told us to stay stupid in the yeah. beginning. Well, I try to tell the guys when they come in, you know, if this is the level of performance you think you can achieve and you're talking to a customer, you promise this. Yeah. Then that difference, you deliver more than you promise is yeah. satisfaction. If you promise this and you perform exactly the same way, that difference is a very pissed off customer. Yeah. You did the same thing. You delivered the same product. Happy, upset. I think a lot of problems could be solved in life in general is by clear set expectations and communication. That's always the failure points. Are we talking about my dating life? Now? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Because, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're, it's still like running a business at that point, you know. You're still trying to go out and make a sale uh, of sorts. Jim, I think you're verging on prostitution, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I won't go there. Uh, so you know, looking at at, at that, those types of uh, scenarios, it's just it's a lot of it's mindset, man. I mean, I just had this conversation today that uh, no matter what we do, it just seems like it's not good enough, and it's like at some point you just got to be like, sure, you, get you know, uh, we got to figure this out because you know, mindset will follow you around, yep. and it won't. But someday it may become not my problem, but it still be yours. And no matter where you go, these types of scenarios will still exist because you're going to be looking for them. Yep. Well, if a technician goes into a home with the mindset that they're going to be successful, they're going to do a good job, they will be. It's a Mm self-fulfilling prophecy. If they go in uncertain, unsure, (coughs) pressured by the company to sell, um, they're going to fail. Right. We don't put any pressure on our guys to sell. Mm Mm-hmm. We put pressure on them to deliver a quality product that the customer needs, take care of their needs. And understand that they need to be to, to be in the education role. Yep. And yeah. the sales will follow. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's FBI, what we call the FBI, Feature Benefit Impact. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. So talking about the feature of the service, how it benefits, and the impact on it's going to have on their life. You exactly. Know? Yeah. We yeah. have to... Yeah, you know, we have a healthier product than our competition. Yeah. We've got 53 products that are green certified. Uh, and the, another thing that is even that wondering how do your employees absorb information? You know, because we've mm-hmm. a lot of the sales uh, and just human relations concepts that I've uh, learned in the car business and other businesses. <clears throat> Mercedes taught us VAC, uh, visual audio, audio auditory kinesthetic. So a customer would tell you um, how essentially how they like to learn things. They want to look at the car. They want to feel the car. They want to mm-hmm. see the car. The, the language they use would indicate to you how they want to right. experience it. Oh, we'll have customers that want to come out to the van and smell the product before we use it. That's yeah, kinesthetic. And we're glad to show them that. Yeah. We'll talk to them back. Again, that's my customer. Right. But I'm saying even in the employee's role, they, they mm-hmm. have the same thing. Yep. Some employees are going to be better listeners, uh, you know, yep. repetition. For me, uh, my challenge when I started selling was the, you know, the first money was one thing, but then they said, well, you got to sell the other things, you mm-hmm. know, then set them up for finance, set them up for this, that, and the other thing. And my numbers were through the floor until I had a buddy of mine. I said, okay, here's the phone. I learn best by repeti- repetitive listening. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I said, run me through permaplay, run me through tire and wheel, run me through extended warranty, maintenance, all that stuff. And um, I, he did. And I just, I played it back mm-hmm. on loop and until I had the muscle memory, until I had the uh, the cadences that he used in my head. I could pull it out of, you know, it was just mm-hmm. programmed, right? Yep. Until I got to Mercedes and... I knew that a lot of people uh, trusted me. They liked me, which is a huge element of sales as well, to the point where once they bought the car, now I could sell them on 
things I believed in. I'm right. like, guys, these are the things I buy and I would buy. And I, I'm not kidding you. Mm-hmm. I would buy extended warranty if the car's a CPO. If it makes sense to extend the CPO warranty, then do it. Mm-hmm. What have you got to lose? Uh, you know, prepaid maintenance. Why would you want to pay face value on the maintenance? Get a break up front, you know, residualize the maintenance on the mm-hmm. lease, so on and so forth. The tires and the wheels are expensive. You want to curb them, you dent them mm-hmm. or something like that, get the coverage. If it makes, I said, those are the three things I, su- I suggest. And they would, you know, well, what about the interest rate? Well, what about the interest rate? Well, you're, you're marking it up. And it's amazing. I would just do that. Yeah, we mark it up. <laughs> and they go, oh, it's a profit center. And it's like the, you'd see the wind in the sails just go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's how you deal with people is the key, is mm-hmm. really the key in any business. Um, Ours may be very similar to yours. I've hired, actually hired people to clean carpet that were car salesmen. Yeah. And I finally fixed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's getting ahead of a, you know, fall in love with the money you can make of this, but understand yeah. we're in the business. I'm in, I'm in the business to serve you because mm-hmm. you're in the business to serve my customers, you know. Well, the job I've got for people in the field as a technician, I think it's a great job. You're... You're almost like an independent contractor, but you're an employee. Yeah. Uh, you're out there working on your own, driving around, meeting people. If you like to meet people, it's a good job. And if you get satisfaction out of doing good work, it's a good job. Right. And they make decent money. Yeah. Yeah, when they start really getting yeah. into it. So after three years of, uh, oh, my gosh, what did I do? When did all of a sudden it realize, you know, I kind of like doing this? Well, the first three years, uh, I actually, I didn't really say this, I actually was not here. Right. I was running it remotely. My wife, my partner, was running it. And uh, let's just say she didn't do a very good job. But right. luckily, I was president of aluminum company and was able to absorb the losses. Right. And I came up to uh, Nashville in 2010 and sat in the office mm-hmm. and listened to what was going on and talked to the technician, just observed and realized we weren't doing the job right. Right. We were still running. I still had people from the old ownership, mm-hmm. and they were running it like the old owners ran it. So, thirty days later, my office manager decided to go work somewhere else. Yeah, which was a good thing, mm-hmm. and started running it myself, and then eventually grew it. Um, but it was that rebuilding. Mm-hmm. But the realization was that honestly, I had some people that I shouldn't have had. Right. And that including happens. my ex-wife. <laughs> Notice he said ex-wife. That Very says ex. everything right there. Yes. So how do people find you and follow you and uh, hire you and such? Well, uh, the internet is our primary source of information, carpetcleanertn.com. Uh, Tyler Krause, Conversion Plus, plug for him. That's right. Uh, did a great job putting that together. We, um, we have good exposure there. We do uh, Google Pay-Per-Click. We do Valpac, but... Uh, I'm going to brag a little bit if I can. Go ahead. Um, last year, the last two years in a row, we've won uh, Kim Dry's franchise, of best estate franchise award. Now, those are given out every year, I'd imagine, right? right? And it's similar to Mercedes Benz Best of the Best. A lot of people like to brag about those things, but I've always asked in interviews with managers and, and such, what does that really mean to what the it, customer? What it means is that. We had the best reviews. Mm-hmm. We had provided the best service. We had the full range of chem dry opportunities in terms of wood floors, granite countertops, tile, uh, area rugs. We're an advanced area rug cleaner. We had embraced all of the new processes and the advanced level of processes that chem dry has. Right. Uh, whereas a lot of companies just do carpet cleaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a wide, including dryer vents, even. You know, we'll do, oh, wow. your, we'll do your wood floors. Um, but Kim Dar recognized us because we had embraced all of that. But there's we have competition too in the yeah. area, other Kim Dries, but we had better reviews mm-hmm. and just the volume of business. Uh, we've grown. They look at the growth rate, that type of thing. And I would imagine that those are evolving KPIs from year to year. Yes. Yeah. But beyond that, we were also nominated for franchise of the year. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But we also won. Uh, Best of Music City nice. last year for carpet cleaning. Well, that's going to be a tremendous feather in your cap. It is, and then we use it right on the front of our As web, you should. When you open up that web page, you're mm-hmm. going to see those awards there. And it's and, like on the website, it should say, under, okay, 
This is not just for not what this yeah. means to you is. But right? the one I'm most proud of is the Best of Music City because that had nothing to do with Kim Drive. That's organic. That is yeah. customers. Yeah. And there's no politicking you can do for it. There's nothing you can do to rig it. Right. Uh, it just happens. Wow. Amazing how that works. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Allen, I appreciate you coming all the way out here, which I don't think is all the way. I think you live locally, don't you? No, I live locally, and it's nice to be here at this estate. This estate that we uh, we rent. So <laughs> That's, I try to be, I'm like, I don't pre pretend for one minute that we own this place, but it is nice. We have great sunsets. If I can say one more thing. Go ahead. Yeah, just for those of you that are interested in carpet cleaning, we are Kim Drive Brentwood, Kim mm -hmm. Drive Franklin. We service all of Davis and Williams and Maury and Rutherford counties. There are other Kim Drives in the area. We actually don't have our own proprietary area. Right. So remember who we are and you'll get the best. There you go. So the link will be in the description and we'll definitely push it out there for you, brother. Thank you, Jim. Mm -hmm.